Mr. President of Flint. President, if I may have a moment of silence for my wife, Bishop and Pastor Bertie Shields. They just told me for in the council down in the meet in the water department down there, whispering like Bogur always in a soft voice. I didn't even know what they were saying. Talking about in mighty fact, he was in your district over there on Dewey Street, but he just three miles, three blocks down the road across Scarping the Road, Friendship Chapel, Church of God in Christ. He just let me know that he passed away. A moment of silence, please. Thank you very much. Now, Mr. President, about this situation, about this uh, accountable this new board we got coming up trying to get ambassment. They want to, uh, they want some money to, to start the ambassment, but all they got to do is ask Mays, because he in charge of, but, but they got the nerve to invite the FBI in here to make the mayor look like she on investigation. You know what they done to the, the Black Panthers in the year back? Always investigated the black man because he in business and always they call himself destroying their organization. And we don't want that to happen in Flint. And with this uh, land bank stuff situation, the county called itself owning everything in Flint and Lent and trying to and put the citizen out of Flint, like me, myself, like we don't count. Like we ain't got no, no property or Lent and all that junk and you were going along and one of your sustitient, whatever, Miss Galloway will go along right around with it. All that stuff talk, she talking about. And, and McGuerrero talking that junk, whispering in rip rap, jitterous language, they like, they want nobody to know nothing and stuff and about that property, and them properties over on Dewey Street, them seven houses you don't want to be occupied and like that school over there in Jefferson, you let that preacher turn the school into a church, but he paying the water bill, you don't want to get, get pay the money for him, all that junk and all this, I like the, we the people's, it's, Rip Raff like Miss Phil talking about. Talking about the public don't want to be involved. Don't and want the public to speak on something like what Gerrero talk. She let the, the woman Gerrero talk, but she don't want the public to talk. Like she working with them counties, people's on the outside the country bunkers. All buying up their every Flint property act like we trapped between the Hatfield and the McCoys, the Flint resident. Getting all them million dollars making Everybody report that marijuana situation all over Flint, all them pop. Like on Dewey Street, that 542 address, bro, well, Dr. Weavers, even the some lunch, all that. Man, y'all better get it straight because you're going to be messed up. Thank you so much, Mr. Bishop. Madam Clerk, our next Our next speaker, speaker. is Mr. Quincy Murphy. Mr. Murphy. Good evening, Quincy Murphy. Um, first, I want to um, thank Councilman Davis. Um, I went on his um, podcast um, this Saturday, and we had a heated discussion going back and forth about the charter because we had been clashing. So we wanted to. It, it was it, it gave us the opportunity to be able to go back and forth. And um, one thing I just wanted to clarify that we talked about um, about the charter, the people in the second war. I'm, I'm looking at this list right here. You got Precinct 7. 55% um, of the residents voted yes for the charter. Precinct 8, 62% of the people voted yes. Precinct 9, 55%. Precinct 10, 55%. Precinct 11, 66%. Precinct 12, 71%. And the only ones that was even was Precinct 13 and 14. So majority of the people in your ward voted yes for the charter to um, uphold the charter. Let me, um, I got a couple of issues that I just want to talk about. Um, one is, could y'all give us the, eight, the update on that lawsuit? I remember um, when counsel, former Councilman Scott Kincaid was here, and it was a $5 million, I believe, lawsuit that the city was supposed to settle with the residents on um, the increase on the water rates. I would like to know where, the, uh, where we at on that. Um, 
is we going they going to settle? I know it's been an appeal or something. So if you anybody can talk briefly on that right there, I would like to know where that's at. Also, I would also like for someone or the councilman to do a referral to have the concerned pastors come in to council and the committee or do a um, public meeting at New Jerusalem where they had the meeting at before to talk about the lawsuit settlement on, because we got some questions about that. And we really haven't seen the concerned pastors come out and tell us specifically what's going on with that. Um, also, could somebody briefly tell us about this um, pre preliminary public hearing dealing with the finance that y'all gonna have to have um, based on the charter within the next couple of um, seven to 10 days. Let us know about that. Can we get a copy of the um, preliminary budget so that we can look over it so that when we do have this meeting, we'll be able to have it. My last piece before I sit down, I wanna talk about the AECON. I, I got some concerns about that because I've been sitting back watching the back and forth with the state telling the city that they all gotta be in compliance and AECON getting paid $5 million. And then when you look at this resolution, this resolution talks about AECON um, com, um, to complete all tasks necessary to manage additional exploratory. But before when AECON came here, they said that they had already did the work. So if they doing the, they already did the work and they didn't come and get prior authorization before city council for y'all to approve those additional dollars, not to say that we don't want to see work get done in the community, but to um, give somebody the go ahead to do over a million dollars worth the work and y'all finna pay them and then when y'all pay them, it, it ain't money in addition, it's money that they done already did. That's setting a bad precedent, so I'm getting ready to um, take my seat. I know um, my three minutes is up, but I have some questions about what is the contract when it comes down to service line replacements or exploratory. Was it 6,000 service lines need to be replaced or was it 6,000 exploratory? What is the difference? Could y'all clarify that contract with us because some of us is confused on what it is that they were supposed to do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Madam Clerk, our next speaker. Our next speaker is Pastor Alan Gilbert. Pastor Gilbert. Pastor Gilbert. Thank you, President Wimper. And to the entire council, we say good evening to all and to the great citizens of Flint. Uh, I, too, have, have some concerns. I like uh, Brother Moss. I just like him, and um, I don't think he was trying to be deceptive when he was up here. I think he was giving us what he had. But I, too, have some questions as well, as I wasn't so much about what he answered. I was concerned about what he didn't answer. And it has gotten our city into so much trouble in the past. Our elected officials to just go along <laughs> to get along. Uh, it's not that I'm against AECOM. I'm not. But those that are agreeing to these contracts, uh, they need to make sure that the council is well aware in a, in a timely fashion and have some communication uh, from the administration, Mayor Weaver and her people. And I'm very disappointed in the fact that in some way or another, somebody gave somebody permission to go ahead and do something and they, by, they bypass the people. And the people is the city council. And that's what I'm afraid of. It, it just seems like that something is is in the weeds. And we need to go and chop those weeds down and find out what they are in the weeds. Now, that's just my take. I'm not saying anybody done anything illegal. I don't know. Now, on this thing about the FBI, let's, let's clear this up about the Ethics and Accountability Board. Councilman Mays disapproved of it. He let everybody know. We all know he disapproved of it. And he has his reasons, and he's got that right. Well, I approved of him coming because it was brought before the entire board. This wasn't a one-man wrecking crew. This was voted on and agreed on by all of us. We have no agenda, no hidden agenda, no dark place against Mayor Weaver and administration or Councilman Mays or anybody else. If you're elected, you took an oath of office in this city to uphold that oath, and we're gonna hold you to it and if you're not willing to, to take that oath and live by it and serve by it and elect it in your ward, then perhaps you should consider stepping down or resigning. Now, that's what Pastor Gilbert said, and I'm in every word of it. 
Now, on the charter, I just wanted to, not to reiterate what uh, Quincy Murphy said, but I have a copy for you, Councilman Davis. So you have, and all of the council uh, elected members, it's the charter vote for 2017. Each ward, each precinct, from uh, Ward 1 to Ward 9, from Precinct 1 all the way down to 61. And we got the total votes, and Ward 1 was the only one that voted no, 279 to 238. Two through nine voted yes for the revisions and the changes in the city charter. And we did. The city council took an oath to uphold the charter. You may not like it, but you gotta uphold it. And if you're not willing to uphold the charter, that goes for Mayor Weaver on down to the janitor. If you're not gonna uphold the charter, which is the local municipal document, then it's time for perhaps that you need to be voted out of office. Thank you, Pastor Gilbert. Uh, Madam Clerk, our next speaker. Our next speaker is uh, Mrs. Carolyn Shannon. Mrs. Mrs. Shannon. Shannon. Mr. President, yes, Winfrey, the graceful city clerk, Inez Brown, and the honorable council, I'm here to say and speak on behalf of senior citizens. I believe is something wrong with that water. My plants are being, are dying because I'm using the faucet water instead of the bottled water. I'm unable to lift the water, and I'm sure many more senior citizens can't lift the bottled water. So I'm asking that the city deliver at least six cases every two weeks to my house and to other senior citizens and put it inside their house because I can no longer live it. I think I deserve it. I gave my city everything that I had, a, a free volunteer for over 40 or 50 years. Another thing that I like to speak on is, in my neighborhood, there's a school called Walter Scott Middle School. They are trying to change that school to an alternative school. But alternative, no one in alternative have given millions and millions of dollars. They're not philanthropists. I do not want that stigma on my children in my neighborhood. The children are coming from all over. I, I've seen them. They do have a challenge, but I do not want them to have that stigma. If the Board of Education is not aware of what Ridgeway White is doing, then they should open up their hearts and open up their eyes and open up their ears and listen. If you put a fiddle, a flute, Chopin, Mozart, Beethoven, Bach, Brahms, Tchaikovsky in front of a child, they will learn it. So this is what I'm asking, that you do not put a stigma on our children in my neighborhood. Walter Scott should, ha should remain Walter Scott Middle School, and if you want to make it an alternative school, put it on paper, but not outside. We do not want to stigmatize our children. We want them to grow up to be better people. We want to grow better young people. We want to grow better senior citizens. We want to grow a better city. We want to grow better jobs. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Ms. Shannon. <laughs> Madam Clerk, our next speaker. Our next speaker is uh, Ms. Uh, Gina Luster. Ms. Luster. Ms. Gina Luster.
Good afternoon. Um, real fast, first I want to talk about land bank. We all know, me, myself, I'm 44. We all know land bank is not doing what it was set up to do. We look around the city, we drive through. The land bank homes are an eyesore. Most of them, at this point, land bank has held on to them so long. They were good homes and good structures. Now they need to be on the demo list. That's because they've sat there and rot, and all of the ray rays from the hood then went in and took out all the pipes, plumbing, the bricks, the siding. So now you got to tear them down. But why was Land Bank holding on to these houses for 10 or 15 years, some of them? It makes no sense. We got a list at the shelter right now where there's people that's working that could afford rent. They don't have the housing or they don't have the credit to get in them. Any of you ever tried to deal with Land Bank and obtain a home? It's not an easy thing. If you have any kind of scars on your record and owing the county, the city, they start digging up all these reasons on why they can't help you. And then on top of that, the people that they so-called helped, I know people that are paying, for instance, um, Laurel Oak. They want that lady to pay more than what her neighbors are paying. So $800 a month for a condo, those condos are 40, 50 years old. They've been around since I've been around. So there are some things that Land Bank needs to have some reform. And I think what Councilman Mays is trying to do is help some of these folk who have nowhere to stay, who are working good people, who want to stay in the city of Flint, who want to pay taxes, who want to keep their yards cut, who want to make sure that their houses look presentable. Not the neighborhood where there's only one house on the block and all the other ones are owned by Land Bank and they're just holding on to them like the Crip Keeper. It makes no sense. This dollar program that Mr. Councilman Mays is speaking about, I've done some homework on it. It's been successful for the city of Flint. You don't believe me? Ask some of the former council people who have sat in those seats. Mr. Ed Taylor be able to tell you about them. Some other folk, Woodrow Stown. There are some people even in this room who have benefited from those dollar houses and still own them and still pay the taxes on them. Every citizen here is not a bad citizen. And to talk about investors, there are investors that aren't even from this country that the land bank has allowed to come in, and those are our slumlords. We, our council is dealing with some of those slumlord properties now. They know which, which ones I'm speaking of. So let's not look so down on trying to change something that's not working. I think it would look excellent for the city of Flint to be able to put some folks in some houses and get these water bills paid. And that way, the pipes can be replaced because the houses won't be empty. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Luster. Madam Clerk, our next speaker. Our next speaker is Reverend Stacy Swimp. Reverend Stacy Swimp. I don't think he's here. I think he's gone already. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chris Del Moroni. Thank you. My name is Chris Del Moroni. I live in Flint, Michigan. Let me first start with the um, acquiring these homes. Uh, the city of Flint has the first or second highest vacancy rate in the entire state, maybe the nation. We don't need more houses in Flint, Michigan. We have too many. We need to enforce our building code and if these slumlords, whoever they may be, or the homeowners, whoever they may be, do not fix their homes up, we need to condemn them and move them in to other homes that are in satisfactory condition. We have people who are trying to sell their homes who can't because they're competing against a $1 house. They're competing against the land bank for $3,000. The land bank spends tens of thousands of dollars to fix a house up and sells it for five or 10. Let me give you the example, Smith Village. The city of Flint spent millions upon millions upon millions of dollars for that. And what did we end up with? 
vacancies, people that, homes that were broken into, appliances stolen. We actually paid for a private security company to patrol that. Every neighborhood in the city of Flint would probably love to have the city of Flint pay for a private security company to patrol their neighborhood. Smith Village should have never happened, but we had a mayor who said, oh, this will be the only subdivision in all of 2012 that will be built in Genesee County. You know, look what we got. Enforce, enforce them building codes. Now, as far as uh, ACOM or whatever their name is, or how you pronounce it, they won the request for a proposal. And in that proposal said what they had to do. And they got done early. And someone in the city of Flint said, well, gee, we don't want them to be doing nothing. Let's give them more work till the end of the construction season. No. You put a bid in based on the request for a proposal. You got the, done, the work done early. Take a break. Good job. Job well done. Let someone else bid on it. Let others bid on it. It's our money, folks. It's our money. Can I say Smith Village again? Can I say the Rutherford parking structure? Council President, ask legal or whoever how much money we've spent on the Rutherford parking deck. We don't own it. We can't use it for free. We'll never own it. We lost the ability to enforce the parking meters downtown Flint. We lost all the way around. I said, don't, don't back them bonds, but the DDA can't afford the bonds, yet they can afford to blow off fireworks every 4th of July. And we, the residents, I know we've paid over a million dollars for the Rutherford parking structure, and we continue to pay. It's like republic waste. There was a request for proposal for that, and I'm gonna wind up right here. They went beyond what was called for in the request for proposal, said, look at us, we're gonna do a lot for the city. Well, that's not what the request for proposal asked for. That's why you put a bid out. ACOM got the bid, they won, they got the work done early. Point of order. I know you're in the sixth ward, Mr. President. You're no, he's got, he's got to wrap it up. I allowed some others, Councilman Mayor. Okay, it's been a year now. You need some laws. You need, we have an unenforceable. Now, now he's right about that. Uh, I, I, the others okay, others yeah. went over just like you did. Okay. Now, let's don't take too much of a benefit of Look, that. Right. Even though you're in the sixth war, and you didn't have to say that, Councilman May, but you're yeah, right. I'll, you know, I, I would actually move if I could have more time, but that's okay. Thank you. Madam Clerk, our next speaker. Our next speaker is um, Ms. Naira Sharif. Ms. Sharif. Ms. Sharif. Am I right? They voted him down to talk, so stick with their group. I tried to get you more time. I ain't playing with you. So, um, my name is Naira Sharif. And, um, you know, like the AECOM contract had several things, and one of those I'm going to say for this special um, order thing, but I'm just going to speak to my experience as someone who is the director of an advocacy nonprofit, Flint Rising in Flint, and over the summer, um, one of AECOM's tasks that was signed off, voted and signed off by council um, just about a year ago, uh, November of 2017 and then adopted by the Receivership Transition Advisory Board in December 2018 was to submit a project plan for the WIN funding, and um, which was a $100 million um, funding that was passed by the federal government, and the AECOM was, was tasked with submitting this plan. And, and when it came open for public comment before there was a public hearing. It was a 300-page binder. I had to utilize my own personal political capital, which was to contact Councilman Mays to help me um, get in a, a copy. So, because I wanted to read it, and I was hoping and praying that AECOM would have done public 
meetings ahead of this because this was a lot of the money that people have fought and went to DC and advocated for as part of kind of like restoration after the water crisis. And I felt that that public hearing and that presentation left a lot to be desired because I felt like it was a very laborious process. They very much scratched the surface. And then after reading this contract and knowing that AECOM was supposed to do a lot more far as public relations and making sure that the public was taken along with this journey, like I felt that Y'all, as somebody who holds the purse strings, y'all need to immediately terminate that contract. You need to sue them for breach of contract because this is just a, a classic case of what activists and people who have political analysis um, cause, cause disaster capitalism. So disaster capitalism is like there's a disaster. You have these vultures coming in. They taking money and making profit after the the disaster and the people remain twisted in the wind. And what the aftermath of Katrina is a classic case of that. And what's happening here um, in the aftermath of the Flint water crisis is another case of that. Thank you, Ms. Cherie. Madam Clerk, our next speaker. Our next speaker is uh, Linda uh, Poli. Poli, Miss mm -hmm. Poli. Well, I've got seven seconds, so I'd like to tell everybody about the Genesee County Bar Association Holiday Dinner. Ten days from today, on the 20th of December at the Masonic Temple, everybody is welcome. We have a meal, we have Santa Claus, we are now giving all children a book, get a wrap present, and we will have hats and mittens for those who need them. So, if you have constituents who might enjoy a warm meal at Christmas time, Please send them. We have capacity to handle more people than we've had in the last couple of years. <clears throat> the main thing I would like to talk about tonight is AECOM, and I would like to say to Nahira and to Arthur that everybody knew when this started that people were going to be making money, a lot of it, and cleaning up after this this misery. It is the way it works. We can call it what we want. I think disaster capitalism is a uh, good term, but somebody's got to clean it up. You chose AECOM unanimously a year ago. Now this is a big company. I did some checking on them. They have gross receipts annually of between 18 and 20 billion with a B, big company. There are countries that have gross domestic project of, of less than that. It's a big company. They've got good lawyers. And their lawyers know what remove approximately 6,000 lead service lines means. They put the approximately in there. But they knew what they were promising to do. Now, I believe that if the proposal was, we will remove approximately 6,000 lead service lines. But we think 1,400 lead service lines is approximate, close enough. I don't think that would have been a unanimous vote. Now, you need to decide what kind of consumers you want to be. I concur with my colleagues' analysis. Uh, Lawyer talk, sorry, President. I agree with my colleague's analysis. I think he's right. I think it took a long time to do. But you need to look at this as businessmen and women. If you are going to hold people to their contracts, then you need to hold people to their contracts. And 6,000 lead service lines means 6,000 lead service lines. They had the expertise they could have done it. If you're not going to hold people to their contracts, then what is the point of getting proposals? Because they're just going to offer you 
what they think you want, and then they're going to do what they want to do, and then they're going to come back and they're going to say, well, it was approximate, it was close enough, pay us our money. That's disaster capitalism. I have nothing more to say. I hope you make the right decision tonight. There are alternatives. I hope you explore them. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Poland. Madam Clerk, our next speaker. That was the final speaker. Okay, at this time we have uh, uh, council persons have two minutes to respond uh, to the speakers and which one of my colleagues would like to go first. Councilwoman Galloway. Thank you. I'd like to say um, first, um, Linda, if I'm not mistaken, that um, dinner is from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. on the 20th at the Flint Masonic Temple, 755 South Saginaw Drive. Thank you. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is um, I appreciate uh, Ms. Shannon coming up. Um, I was not aware that um, Scott was, that they were considering an alternative school. That was the original intent, but when it opened up in September, it opened up as a middle school, of which right now the principal is very happy with what they're seeing. So if there is something new that you've learned that says that they are changing it to an alternative school, I have not been aware that the, the principal over at Scott is wonderful. They've received $15,000 for the teachers to have money to spend on their students for like paper and, and different things. And so um, I will touch bases with the principal of that school to see if the, the scope of them have changed. I'll, I'll meet with her. Um, and um, I do have some things to um, say about the AECOM thing, but um, I will wait until we have discussion on that. Thank you. You're so welcome. Any, any of my other colleagues? Councilman Davis and then Councilman, Councilwoman Fields. Thank, thank you, Mr. President. Very interesting public comment today. Very interesting and enlightened, at the least, Mr. Murphy. <laughs> Whoa, boy. You know, and also Pastor Gibbon. People vote for whoever they want, and that, that is a choice. I, I, you won't never get an argument out of me out of that. But I would just hope we were <coughs> wise enough to the place we understand sometimes things ain't always like it appear. And you can't always trust people because they say they love you. Love is an action. It's easy to say one thing and make it appear another way. That's what magic tricks does. And this city is under uh, magicians. Like uh, Miss Poli said, you know, it's in a uh, young lady over there. People play on the disaster. Everybody benefited so far except the residents. And that's clear to see. Everybody benefiting except the residents. Now the one speaking for the residents, if I'm really not versed, I shouldn't pretend to be versed. It's easy to sit up here and pretend you know everything. You have to rely on people that have the authority and the knowledge and the credentials to make them type of decisions. AECOM, when this disaster came, this is the first in the nation, in the history of this nation that I can think, when we've been poisoned. You don't have all your, you dot your eyes as you go. This here is unscripted itself daily. But what AECOM did was unprecedented. Is everything perfect? No, it's not. But if you gonna pit against a company that did disaster relief all over the, U the United States, who do you replace them with? And the answer right now for Flint, nobody. So what am I saying, is they perfect? No, but we got to make the closest we can the perfect choices. In a time like, it's easy to sit back and complain, but at least the mayor and administration, along with this body, we made some choices to move this city the best of our ability out of this disaster. We got a long ways to go, but we better sit here to make sure we don't go backwards and continue to try to move forward. Now, would AE come with whatever they need? I don't know, but I'll tell you one thing. I ain't versed enough to go against what they're trying to move forward at doing. You would never not hear me support them. I'm going to support whatever administration is doing along with them because Councilman I don't Davis, know. Councilman Davis, your time can is I? up. If you can please wrap up. Okay, I'll wrap up. But what I'm saying is this. I don't want it on my shoulder when I know I don't have the expertise to stop a progress when people are dying. 
the city have the, the, the residents haven't had no kind of a reformation or the damage what's been done to us. This is another conversation other than a lawsuit. No, the state owe us, and I'm going to continue to say, but it's a blessing we have an e-com to step up for this city call, Flynn, and I'm done. Councilwoman Fields. Okay, I'd like to respond to something Mr. Woodson said and, and Mr. Murphy. First of all, I brought to council a copy of the purchase ordinance, which clearly said that if you're going to modify a contract, that contract has to be modified in the same method the original contract was approved. That means it has to be brought to city council for approval. And unfortunately, this administration, I can think of, and I wrote down here three things that they did without bringing it to council that they gave verbal modifications. One is to this uh, AECOM contract, Mr. Binzik and, and Mr. Newsom, and um, they had no authority to do that. Um, and also, if council will recall, when they told, they have gave uh, lead line replacement contractors verbal extensions, okay? Uh, you can't modify a contract that way. And then lastly, on the HydroVac issue, there was no, you know, and I keep hearing this was a city policy. City Council has to approve any city policy. And there's been no policy brought before Council regarding hydrovacking or, or excavation. So I intend to place a complaint to the Ethics and Accountability Board because they've clearly violated the, the administration, um, the purchasing ordinance in multiple ways. I also want to say to Mr. Murphy, if you want to know the status of the lawsuit, you should call Mr. Kincaid directly because if we make a referral, it's going to come back confidential. We'll have to go in executive session. You still won't know what the status is. And then the last thing, Mr. Murphy, is please use your dictionary. I know you've got one. Look up exploratory, excavation, and replacement. These are each distinct, concrete words that have different meanings. These meetings are not interchangeable. And in the dialogue I've heard from AECOM, they tried to say that these are interchangeable words. They're not. They have very specific meanings. That's all. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, Councilwoman, Councilman Guerra, I'm sorry. Yeah, I want to make a referral to the concerned pastors uh, to see if they see a request that they could host another community meeting like at New Jerusalem as they did before for residents to ask questions. Um, also, I do have something to say about AECOM, but I'll speak on that once we get to the resolution. And uh, that's it. Okay. Uh, Davina, did you get that referral? Thank you, ma'am. Um, Councilman Mays. Yeah, you have to... You have to listen close to when Kate Fields and them talk. She just said you could do a change order or amendment in writing. That's what this is. It's in writing. It's a change. This is the day to do it. And the city can do it. Not just the mayor and them and all this verbal. This is the day. This is it in writing. It's going to be yes or no on the change. That can come in writing. That's what the day is, Pastor Gilbert. So all of that talk about what is, and we got to make a decision, do we want to make that change? AECOM ain't going to go broke if you don't make the change. I'm going to vote to make the change. I don't want them to stop in September, be it to go back out, all that process. That ain't me. I want to use September, October, November, and December working. That's what this is about. Then you have to deal with the concerned pastor's consent agreement. You have to deal with the um, 10 zones where contractors was at. See, this ain't just AECOM. And when people making decisions in this whole arena, you got to factor in what happened with the contractors and what was said and changed with them as it relates to hydro backing. AECOM didn't make that decision. So folks want to punish AECOM for proceeding to manage 2,800 more with the contractors like they made the decision. Mr. Moss said, we just decided to move on. If you don't pay them, you don't pay them. I won't be a part of not paying them. He said everything he wanted to say. Yeah, we know the contract. This is the day for the change order in writing. 
Miss Fields and them can vote it down, and then they can go put out bids for another AE car. I'm going to vote to pay the million because when they got hung up on money, that's when we got into the disaster. People talk out both sides of the necks. So I'll wrap up. That's why I want the special order because you can't even address this in two minutes. You got in a disaster because people were counting money. We didn't had over 559 million head this way for this disaster, and they fit in the auger and make try to make the news on a million. I can't wait to get into this discussion a little more because it ain't, it's going to make sense. Everything they say, we're going to make it make sense, and then we're going to vote. And if it ain't five, just watch the ones who vote no to move forward and watch the ones who vote yes. I sleep well tonight, Thank and you. I'm telling you, AECOM, they billion dollar business will sleep well with or without a million. I'll be voting to give them the money. Thank you, Councilman Mays. Um, I don't have any communications. Uh, I mean, back to public speakers, I'll, I'll wait until both presentations are made. Um, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Councilman Griggs. Okay. Okay. I'd like to be dogmatic again about three facts. There have been zero deaths due to lead poisoning in Flint. So far, there's been 12 deaths directly attributable to Legionella disease. And the third fact is we still do not have a proper backup water supply. We're getting our redundant sources come from Lake Huron and Lake Huron. State law requires we have a separate water source for backup. That's my facts, and I'm going to keep being dogmatic about it until people understand this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Griggs. Uh, Councilwoman Worthy? Uh, to Mr. Del Moroni, uh, you mentioned that AE Com had finished early and then we gave them more work, and I just wanted to correct you on that because they never finished the job, and that is why I will be voting no. Uh, AE Com, and this is from Alec Gibbs, a uh, lawyer. AECOM has failed to install approximately 6,000 lead service lines as agreed to multiple times within the contract. I brought this up last uh, Wednesday, Thursday, whatever day it was, several times. And uh, Mr. Moss had said, oh, well, no, it's interchangeable. We say that, but then we say this. If it's in the contract and I can show you exactly where it is, then that's what they need to do is replace 6,000 lead service lines. As of now, they've replaced 1,500, not even half of what they promised us. Number two, AECOM has failed to ensure the use of the predictive model as agreed to by the parties in the contract. Uh, it, they were supposed to talk to the Fast Start team. They were supposed to use the methods that were already proven to work, and they were supposed to improve on it. In fact, they did worse. Uh, last year, they had a 94% success rate in getting lead service lines. This year, you could throw a dart on the board and have a better success rate than the company we paid $5.5 million for to replace lead service lines. I am appalled that anyone would give AECOM one million dollars more money without coming to us first and asking council to approve it. They said they did it at their own risk, then let that one million dollars be at their own risk. And I would hope that we do not continue on with AECOM. If they cannot do what they promised us for $5.5 million, they have no business uh, working in this city. Also, AECOM has failed to use hydrovac methods for exploration and excavation as agreed to by the contract. The mayor may have made that suggestion, but council did not approve it. Uh, so I will discuss this more later, but I wanted to get at least a start. I think that's everybody. Okay. Uh, Madam Clerk, uh, this is where we have changed, and now I will introduce Ms. Nayira Sharif. You've already introduced yourself. I'm just doing it again. But you come back uh, 
and do your presentation for Mr. Alec Gibb, I believe, and then followed by representatives from AECOM. So my name is Nair Sharif, and um, Isn't that what I said? Mr. I President, am, point, of, point of information, point yes, of sir. order. We at the special order. Yes, sir. Okay, if I may, since I had requested it, if I may, let me say this as we proceed. Just, I want people as we go through this special order to understand this. The intent of that contract wasn't for AECOM to manage 12,000 to get to 6,000. <coughs> See, they keep talking about 6,000. Um, you didn't get but 1,500. The intent of this contract wasn't for AECOM to manage 12,000 to get order. to 6,000. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What's your point? I'm not sure why he is talking, he's giving his opinion on this AECOM contract. He should do that in discussion later. Okay. I'm going to allow him to do that because we're talking about some information that would be good for all of us to have, whether we agree. But or his information or differs from other information. And that's okay. That's all right. We but then let him discussion. say that at, during discussion. This that's is not the appropriate okay. time well, for him I, to state his opinion. Is she debating or is she did no, no, a no, point no, no, order? No, 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 no. Let me handle this, Mr. Beck, because you, you, you're getting ready to get favored here, so you might ought to just go ahead and she out of order. Uh, let me say this. When you do a special order for those new council people, whether it's a resolution, handing it to some community person, I requested this special order. And so I appreciate your ruling, Mr. President. So as we get ready to listen, and we'll have time during this special order, my intent ain't what she talking about. The spirit and the contract, in my opinion, didn't tell AECOM to manage 12,000, 10,000, or whatever until you get to 6,000. That wasn't the spirit of this contract. The spirit of this contract included both exploratory and lead service replacement lines. So we'll talk about the various places that 6,000 is mentioned and what those things mean. That's what I'm interested in. Alec Gibb is no different than me then um, in a little different, don't take this wrong, Chris Delmarone, but he ain't no different than me, you, or somebody else who done wrote a paper who got some staff and others. I look at it, I read it, and I'm eager to show where it's misguided. And so we'll let this special order flow, Mr. President, but I Hello. appreciate that. Yeah. And as we listen to the speakers that was voted on, that still won't take away the intent of my request for this special order. Thank you. Hold on, just, just a second longer, and uh, Councilwoman Fields wants to chime in. I just want to say, Mr. President, I think you ruled incorrectly on that, although Is I didn't. Is that what you wanted to stop me? Yes. For? Okay, go, proceed. Because. What you've done in essence is give Mr. Mays unfair advantage in discussion, and I believe that's what Councilwoman Worthing was trying to point out. We are going to have discussion when the item comes up, but allowing him to speak first setting up the thing is giving him uh, an unfair advantage in discussion. That's all I want to say. Councilwoman, uh, Councilwoman Worthing speaks as intelligently as you do. I understood what she said. And Ms. President. Councilman, I, I got it. Please. Mr. President, Councilman. if I may, this is a special order I requested. And ain't nobody can have no unfair advantage. I'm not fighting for no advantage. I'm fighting for the communicating facts. If Ms. Worthen and Ms. Fields wanted to speak, they got that opportunity. But don't cloud what I'm doing in a special hearing I requested with all that negative stuff, unfair advantage, criticizing you. It just frankly pisses me off. Thank you, Councilman Mason. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Uh, Ms. Sharif, now you okay. may proceed. Okay. So um, once again, my name is Nayira Sharif, and I'm reading this memorandum, which all of you should have a copy of, all the council should have a copy of it, mm -hmm. on behalf of Alec Gibbs, who's someone I've known for several years. And I'm reading the statement verbatim. And um, if the public wants a copy of this, um, I can forward it along. And it references a, a variety of pieces from the AECOM contract that was passed by the city. So I will begin. I am submitting this memo to the Flint City Council as a concerned resident who has taken the time to analyze the contract between the city of Flint and AECOM 
for Program Management Services, which was approved by City Council on November 27, 2017, and approved later by the Receivership Transition Advisory Board on December 20, 2017. I became concerned about this contract as I surveyed news reports and statements of certain city officials, as well as court filings and the Natural Resource Defense Council lawsuit. I am also a cooperating attorney with the Michigan American Civil Liberties Union, although I have not played any direct role in the litigation concerning the city of Flint water crisis. This memorandum should not be construed as legal advice being offered as an attorney for any party to any existing dispute. I set aside several hours to review the contract materials, which exceeded 100 pages. This includes the above reference resolution, the agreement dated December 28, 2017, and all attachments included with it. I have exerted the most material attachments to the agreement, including the following portions of the program, management service best and final offer, assumptions, task order two, Attachment A, um, which is the RFT, highlighted pages 10 and 11 of the RFP. Attachment B, November 22nd, 2017, minutes from the Flint uh, Department of Public Works. Additionally, there are other separate components of the contract that were attached, including Section 5 product approach excerpts, Darby L. needing background for Task 7 lead service line replacement replacement project manager timeline and the July 14th, 2017 communication regarding the performance bond. I have taken the time to do for council what should have been done by other city of Flint officials. And by so doing, I have discovered several promises made by AECOM under this contract that have not been kept, including but not necessarily limited to the following. One. AECOM has failed to install approximately 6,000 lead service lines as agreed to multiple times within the contract. Two, AECOM has failed to ensure the use of the predictive model as agreed to by the parties to the contract. Three, AECOM has failed to use hydrovac methods for exploration and excavation as agreed to by the contract. In order to understand what the expectations of the parties were at the time of the contract was signed, we can look at the way the contract itself is organized. During the meeting before the Flint community, Moss repeatedly referenced assumptions when confronted by council members who cited the references the contract made to lead service replacement lines. In reality, all of the material cited by Moss and the council members is found in attachments to the contract that were incorporated by reference. And it says, see Exhibit 2, AECOM contract, page 7, whole agreement. This written agreement and the document cited herein embody the entire agreement between the parties. This is important in no small part because the terms of the agreement specify that modifications must be made in writing, signed by the parties, or their authorized representatives under Michigan and City of Flint law even if the terms will not, alarm, uh, not follow in practice as a result of the actions of officials and employees within the city of Flint, that does not constitute waiver of the terms, covenants, or conditions of the contract. There is no provision of the December 28, 2017 agreement label assumptions, so Mr. Moss can only be referencing the headings, label assumptions, and the documents that are incorporated by reference. These documents are referenced as contract documents on page two of the agreement, and according to that provision, the contract in its entirety includes the invitations for bids, instructions to bidders, proposals, affidavit, addenda, if any statement of bidders' qualifications were required, general, general conditions, special conditions, performance bond, labor and material payment bond, insurance certificates, technical specifications, and drawings together with the agreement. The actual scope of services is defined on page six of the contract. The scope point of order. Oh. Five minutes is up. Oh, it was no. voted upon and done by the majority of this council. I tried to help y'all, Naira. Yes. Um, it's time to hear from AECOM. We got to be oh. fair and by the y'all vote. Five well, times is up. The last page is recommendations. Point of order. So I'm just point of order. You know that. Point. Thank you. Have you ruled? Because she's still tough. No, she's done. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Naira. That's your counsel, Nair. 
Now, would we, would, do we have representatives from AECOM that would like to approach the... Uh, Just ignorant. Remember who do what. Uh, Mike Weingar with AECOM and uh, Ed Tarp with AECOM. Uh, we do not have a presentation. We made our presentation last week, but we'd be happy to uh, answer questions from council. What's your point? Sure. Go ahead. I'm a vice president. All right. I'm the program manager for the uh, project that we're talking and could you, about. Could you, could you repeat your names again just for the record? Ed Tharp. Ed Tharp. Mike Weingard. Okay. So then you said you don't have a presentation, but you would address, you would entertain any questions that any of the council may have. And I see my colleague, Eva Worthing. Ms. President. Councilman. Okay. So, Ms. Worthing. Yes, I do have a question. Thank you. Um, so I read this last week in the contract, and it, you were to develop and maintain a master, master schedule that prioritized the project based on legal, operational, customer service, public health, and other criteria to define best practices for managing, updating, forecasting, and reporting project and program progress and status. Uh, and you said that you will engage with the existing Fast Start project management team to gain an understanding of the Fast Start program and help enhance the systems, processes, and data management used to manage the current phase, phase four of the project. So according to that, I have a question for you. What systems, processes, and data management were used in phase four of the project? We, we didn't work on phase four. No, but I'll read it again. AECOM shall engage with the existing Fast Start project management team to gain an understanding of the Fast Start program and enhance and help enhance the systems, processes, and data management used to manage the current phase. So you should, as AECOM, know what they used in phase four. It's right here in the contract. So my question for you is, what systems, processes, and data management were used in phase four of the project? Okay, first of all, we did not have a contract till December 28th, and the um, uh, fast start, we were supposed to uh, spend a whole month of December um, in conjunction with them to learn exactly what was going on. We did not get a contract till December 28th, and they left uh, shortly. We did hire one of them uh, to assist us, um, and uh, I don't know, I'm not sure exactly everything they did uh, beforehand, but again, there was only three of them. Hold on, j j j just before you, let me, let me tell the, my colleagues how I'm doing this. I'm only counting the time when, when AECOM is talking, so I'm not counting the time when you're talking. Mr. President. Councilman. It ain't no time. Well, what you time five, you count? You said five minutes. No, that was for AECOM in Naira, they said. That was the motion. Right. That's what passed. But they I'm put saying, five minutes on AECOM in Naira. But it was five minutes apiece. No, I didn't hear that. I can you have a read back the motion? Yes. Can you can you read back the motion? Right. That was A E Com and Naira five no, minutes. No, 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 no. Listen, Councilman, she said five each five A E Com and Naira each. Yeah, each. It's two of them. They gave Naira five minutes and AECOM. She just read it. Yeah, and she said with no council discussion or whatever. Council ain't been addressed by no time frame. What's your point? Okay. Well, anyway, let's do this, because we can sit here all night long talking about much of nothing, and I'm not going to let that happen. What I'm doing is we're not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not charging you time, I'm not charging AECOM time until they speak. So I'm allowing all counsel to have their questions asked, 
and then AE comes, speaks, and once they, you speak, you've spoken for five minutes, that's fair. That's how much we gave uh, Miss um, Sharif. Uh, that's the best I can do. Mr. President, Mr. President, yes. I don't have a problem with us addressing um, AE Com, Naira, Bar Rob, Benzik, or whatever. The intent of the special order was to hear from AE Com, Naira, and anybody else. Absolutely. The substitute motion then changed my intent of the special order, and it was clear to me that A.E., Com, and Naira for their presentation had five minutes. We didn't hear nothing about any additional time frames on the special order as it relates to counsel. Okay. So I'm letting, I'm hoping she proceed. That was what, and the motion speaks for itself. If the s secretary and staff read that motion back verbatim, clearly I heard what it said. Okay. Councilwoman Galloway. Um, through you to um, Davina, can she please read that before? Read it back again, please. Davina. Substitute motion was five minutes each to speak with no council discussion or public comments. And that was for AECOM and Naira. His original motion also said anybody else that wants to speak. Okay. All right. So, so Mr. President, yes. in the interpretation, when it says with no council discussion, it, it's, it sounds to me as though the two speakers would have the ability to spend time five minutes if they if there was a presentation and or what Miss um, Sharif wanted to share and then we would move on but it sounds like there may be a misinterpretation. Is that is that, that how you're interpreting it? No, that ain't my interpretation. I asked for a special order and then it was a substitute motion on the speakers who could speak in the time limit. That was the only substitute. Okay. It's my special order. Hell, I know what I would call it for. And so it was substituted to only allow two speakers and to give them five minutes. That was clear in my okay. mind. Councilwoman Fields. Yes, she made the motion. Since I made the substitute motion, if you'll recall the, the original motion. Mm -hmm. I beg your pardon. If you'll recall, the original motion included additional council discussion on the, ch the agenda changes. Mm -hmm. Okay? So my motion was to not include additional council discussion. Right. I did not make the motion that council couldn't discuss after the presentation right. or ask I, questions. That's what I understood it to be. I yes. understand that. And I, I think perhaps Ms. Donahue is tired or not feeling well, but that is what I said. M point of point of Mr. President. What's your point? Ms. Donahue read it verbatim. Ms. Okay. Donahue, I agree with her. I agree with what Ms. Fields said. I'm, uh, I'm just saying to you, be careful with that five-minute rule on us, because that wasn't part of the motion or the intent of but the I, special. But I don't order. think you heard what I said, Councilman. Okay, I said, you was talking I about day five. I said minutes. I won't. When council are when council is asking question, I won't charge that to them. Okay, five then I'm. I've all for nothing. Yeah. Then. Okay, thanks. Ms. I just want to say, for the record, I intended to just write it down as you say it. I don't catch what you might have meant. You know, okay. talk about before when you say I make the motion, that's all I write. So it might have been your intent, but I didn't catch. I just wrote down exactly how you said it. Okay. I think we're getting there now. If we don't, if we don't throw any stumbling blocks here, uh, Councilwoman Galloway. Where's so, Well, I don't, I don't know if, if, if Councilwoman Worthing was done. Were you? Are you, you're wanting to ask questions? I just have one question. Oh, okay. Um, I got you. I'm just gonna, I just had that question for now, but, um, but since they're struggling to answer it, uh, the answer is that the phase four uh, used the predictive model. And, uh, and that was really the only data processes that they used, and it was 94% uh, successful. Um, last week, the director of public works said his opinion, it was never used. What did he just say? We 
Okay. Did you repeat? I, I right, didn't wait, hear wait, that. I'm wait sorry. Now, wait now. Let's don't let's don't have a round robin now. Let's go through me or either we're gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna point of information. What's your Thank point? You. Can he repeat what he said <clears throat> in the mic? Okay. Thank you. Would you repeat that again, please, sir? Last Wednesday night when I was here, I believe the director of public works stated that in his opinion he does not believe that model was ever used. Okay. That what was ever used. The the predictive model was ever used. Okay. Mr. Wimp. Oh. No, I got, I got, I got you. I got oh, you. No, sir. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Councilman Mays. Yeah. Um, at some point, <laughs> you had reached a number 6,000, correct? Whether it was excavations and or <laughs> pipe replacement, you were managing 6,000. Is that a fair statement? Correct. Now, when you took on that contract, did you in your mind believe that you had to have a phase, this is phase five, did you believe that in phase five, what you was managing, that you were mandated by the contract to change 6,000 before you stopped? No. And so the 6,000 changes that we keep refer, that people keep referring to, you didn't believe that you had to explore or manage 12,000 in the contract year to get to 6,000. That was not your interpretation. Correct. And would it be fair to say that you might have had to dig up 14,000 to get to 6,000? You might have dig up 10,000 to get to 6,000. You did dig up in this phase right now about what, 8,800? I think it's 9,600 as of Friday. And you still ain't at 6,000. So correct. the season is over, correct? Well, they're still working. Well, they are still working, but the plants is closed um, right. as far as the restoration. <laughs> that fine. don't That's affect fine. the excavation. So let me ask this question. And y'all still managing them, ain't you? Correct. And Mr. Moss came and said, we understand contracts and we took a chance. Was you here when he kind of alluded to that? That's not what he said verbatim. Right. In good faith, we're, we're In still good going because we don't want to shut down. We got great momentum going. That's correct. I don't want them shut down. And this could serve as a written change order today, you think? This resolution and what we vote on in writing could be a yay or no on a change order, you think? I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not, I ain't a lawyer. I'm not either, going there. But I know it's in writing, yes. and I know something is changing. And so, believe me, to me, a written change when you say the city, some people don't understand what I think I understand. They say the city, and they refer to the finance director, public works, the mayor. When I say the city, I refer to public works, finance director, the mayor, and city council. So we are the city. And so whatever half of the city in that co-equal branch of government administration and legislative branch has said, y'all have talked to half of the city per se since September to now. Now you are talking to the last half and guess what this half of my one vote gonna say? I'm all for the change order. And I'm glad that y'all kept rolling rather than stop take a month or so to put out for bid, lose that time when folks saying every pipe need to be changed because of health and safety. Now that's a little hypocritical. If you want to change a pipe in October rather than put it out for bid, <coughs> that one family that was changed in October is important to Councilman Mays. I'm glad you didn't stop. So you're going to hear people talking hypocritical. Because they're going to say change in lead pipes is important, but not important enough to stop in October. In October, guess what we can do? She think it's funny. I didn't laugh when other folks, but maybe they ain't laughing at me, Mr. President, but I'm going to make my point. And if I can't make it to Miss Worthen or somebody ain't taking my logic serious or they out in playland. Point of information. What's your point? I'm not laughing at Mr. Mays. Okay. Thank okay. You. Well, Thank hopefully you. it ain't none of these points I'm making. 
because the points I make can end up getting votes. And so I don't know what they do. They done talked about me so bad and did me so bad, it'll take them months to get their credibility back when I look across the aisle at their demeanor and what they're saying. So I'm gonna say this to you, Mr. Thorpe. Here's some folks here, and what you say your name was, Mike? Mike, Mike Weingard. Yeah, I remember when you first came, Mr. Weingard. Every, pretty much all the council people voted for AECOM. And now here months later, they questioning your whatever they question. My position is this. Um, they don't know who they gonna get to manage it. This ain't even close to what Mr. McDaniels was doing because Mr. McDaniels didn't do no project plan. Mr. McDaniels didn't have 30 inspectors out there with um, tablets logging all of this information so we'll have records in the future. Y'all subcontracted out with 30 Flint folks um, in a inspection program, didn't you? Correct. Do you know whether or not Mr. McDaniels did that? I don't believe he did. In phase four, I don't remember seeing those type of inspectors because I've been out there on site and they take pictures down in the hole and then they log it, and that's what I showed to dots and computer. We got to fix records. So they managing not only changing service lines and excavation, but they done managed the project plan. They done also dealt with reimbursements. So they ain't Mr. Mr. McDaniels, General McDaniels didn't have to deal with reimbursements. Now look what's happening right now. The state is saying the city of Flint qualifies for four million, but we only gonna give you three million, I mean one million and hold back three million until y'all say I'm gonna use Hydrovac. They ain't saying cause you don't, ain't owed it. Councilman, now you've had a little over five minutes. We're gonna have a second round cause Ms. Worthing wanna go back. I thought we just hashed this out. Well, we didn't say five minutes, two rounds, second I, round. I mean, you can direct it the way you want, Mr. Councilman, President, but I asked for I'm this I'm going to listen to you, but I it. will expect to be listened to as well. So go ahead and finish what you were saying to me. I had the flow. You had the floor, but I'm trying to tell you, I don't want to be here all night. Mr. President, you ain't got to be here no night. I don't have to say another word. I, you let all these other people. Was not, you here not, the other day when I let Kate Fields and even them go back and forth, you're back not and forth, back and forth? You're not listening I'm to me. Saying, I'm saying we've got a second round going, and you're not asking them questions. You're giving commentary. That's not hatching. I don't out. have to ask questions. Council I have asked council, a multiple council, amount of council, questions, wait, Mr. Just, President. Hold up. You, you say no, I ain't asked questions. I, it's proof yell. I ask questions. You don't have to yell. You don't have to, that's unnecessary. Well, you don't have to whisper. I don't have to tell people I can't council hear you. Mains, Let me be me. You got one more minute, and then I'm going to move on to others, and then we're going to go out Mr. President, you round. take that minute and stick it up your council seat. Now, you now, ain't gonna put no one now, minute on me. Order, now you're, point now of you're, order. What's your point? What's the point? Councilman Mays is treading the line of being disruptive at this point. Point of order. What's your point? You keep interrupting when I got the flow. That's the point. Councilman Mays. That's my point, when I Mr. President. You, may I say something in its entirety, please? Not when you tell me I got one I'm minute. Saying you've been talking for five minutes. I wouldn't care. Well, I do because- So go home. Mean. Go home if you don't want to do this job. Councilman Mays. Don't tell me in I'm front not gonna, of folks I'm not I got go, one minute I'm not going like to have all this back and forth with you. That's Fred not going to happen. I'm not going to, I'm not willing so to sit and go back So let me finish. I didn't ask multiple questions. You got you one minute. Ask you no got one no, minute to wrap up. No, you take that one minute round. and stick it up your council seat. Tell me I got one minute. This Councilwoman feels- you and I ain't floor. gonna give up my opportunity and my seat because you saying one minute and we just discussed no time limit. Proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Here. Number one, I, I don't promise understand. you it's not. I promise you it is. Proceed. I don't understand why you've not removed Mr. Mays after his comments to you, but uh, I'm going to get back to business here. Okay. Shit, I've been, been Number back one, to I'd business. like to say. Point of information. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What's I your am point? Business. 
What's your point? What's your, po what's your point? Okay. Councilwoman, proceed. In response to you, you dug over 9,000 or whatever, I want to, yeah, but you, you didn't find the copper I'd like, to, or lead lines. Well, if you continue to dig where only copper lines are, you're not going to find lead lines. So that's the whole point of the predictability model. And I don't know if Mr. Benzik said that they've never used a predictability model because I can show you minutes of meetings with AECOM that they certainly, or with uh, McDaniels or whatever, they certainly had been using the predictability model. And also, Eric Schwartz's court declaration under oath in a deposition that they certainly had been using that. So I don't think that's actually true, what you just said. I also want to respond to one quick thing, and then I have questions for them. Uh, yes, this is a change order in a way, but we do change orders prior to the action, not after the fact. Um, okay, and also that we had council meetings in September, October, and November, actually quite a few of them. So I think it was perfectly reasonable to think that, um, you know, the administration could bring this to our attention and could bring a change order or recommendation for a contract modification before then. But what I wanted to ask you is, are you aware that your contract with the city has a couple clauses? One is about a performance bond and the other is about contract uh, dispute resolution. Could you tell me how much your performance bond is on this contract? I don't know. You're a VP and the program manager, and you don't even know how much your performance bond is? <laughs> I don't believe we have. I think what you're referring to is okay. uh, we had a uh, betterment in the proposal to um, where we would uh, bond so that we could pay the contractors faster than the city pays them, and that was not uh, accepted. No, sir. In the contract, there is a section that AECOM agrees to. First of all, it's, it was a requirement in the RFP, I believe. And then in your own contract that you've written back, you've said you will get a performance bond. And I think it's quite a considerable large bond, as maybe as large as $100 million you're supposed to be carrying. And the reason I bring this up is, I will break in my flow there. The reason I'm bringing this up is this isn't just a we can only do it this way or we can only do it that way. In my opinion and in many other opinions, including the attorney who is so disturbed uh, by what he was hearing and what he actually read in the contract that he actually wrote this memorandum that's almost like a brief that clearly you are in breach of contract. You did not deliver what you were supposed to deliver, which was at least 6,000 lead line service replacements. And Mr. Moss thinks that exploration or excavation or replacement apparently is the same word, and I would suggest you buy a company dictionary for him so he could understand they're not the same word. Um, and I think the other way we need to go with this is and uh, I'm going to make this recommendation to the law office, um, is that we need an answer to why we're not going after, at the very least, uh, contract dispute resolution, because why should we take another $1.1 million to pay you more money to just dig more holes because the resolution says to do more exploratory, exploratory work it doesn't even say to do more lead line replacement work. When you didn't fulfill this contract, why should we take that 1.1 million and give it to you instead of spending it on more water infrastructure replacements that we have? That makes no sense. And I cannot understand how this administration could in any way support giving you additional money instead of making you adhere to the terms of your contract and at the very least, go, to, go into some form of arbitration to discover you think you fulfilled it. 
many of us don't think you have. So I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of those clauses in your contract, and I would Councilwoman suggest- Councilwoman Fields, you've yes. been over five minutes as well. Okay, so I just to... uh, want to know about the performance bond. I'm not sure who to ask, whether it's Rob Benzik or finance or who. Okay. A referral. I would like to see a copy of that performance bond. Did you get that the referral, Davina? Okay, Councilwoman Galloway. Thank you, sir. Um, thank you for being here tonight. Um, on the assumption page of the contract, I think this is um, Exhibit Number Four in our packet. General assumptions one, two, three, under Number Three. Letter B, I, or one, it actually is. It says plan and manage the removal of at least 3,000 lead service lines in 2018. 6,000. 6, 6, what did I say? I'm sorry. 6,000. So, I'm, and then I'm going by the bottom under task order number two assumption. Number five, bullet point two, it says four lead service line day per construction crew, 6,000 LSLR, I'm assuming that means lead service line replacements in 2018. Now, <coughs> with that being said, I'm no contract expert, but this is the wording that your, con your company submitted as their best and final offer under assumptions. With that being in mind, what is your interpretation of plan and manage the removal of at least 6,000 lead service lines in 2018? All right, we got to remember what the driver is here, and the driver was uh, concerned Pastor Selman that says you have to have 18,000 excavations by the end of December 31st, 2019. So all along, it's excavations. I don't think there's 6,000 lead lines out there left. Um, as we get further and further out, it, it's getting to be, uh, I think we're getting like 15% now. So are you saying that regardless of, of what your contract has, that this Point of information? Hold on, what's your point of information? Um, at the time that the city entered the agreement with the ECOM, there were an estimated 20,000 to 30,000 lead lines to replace. Council, council well, woman, it's council, incorrect. Councilwoman, would you do me a favor? Let's let let's let the councilman finish their stuff, and then let's let the and then you you got we're coming back around to you. Okay. All right. I'll see you again. Cool. So so is it is it your assumption that even though in a legal binding contract, your organization submitted this as their scope of work. Are you now saying that that was our interpretation, but the concerned pastors over, overrode that? No, what I'm saying is it's always been excavations. It's some places it says explorations, some places it says excavations, some places it says replacements. Uh, our contract was to do 6,000 explorations this year. We, fi we uh, reached that, I think, around September 15th. Right now, we're at, as of last Friday, we're at 9,600 something. So how many, um, how many lead, how many plan and manage um, removals have you done? I think there was, of that 9,600, I think it's 1,700 and something. 1,700? Right. I'm, 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 doing, I'm doing this specifically for my record for, because I can only go by what's, what's in front of me. And so I do see here where it says on page two of that assumption under um, task order number two, it says assume 6,000 explorations can be completed in six months by four contractors. And so I appreciate you guys being here. But my interpretation, this seems clear, to plan and manage the removal of at least 6,000 lead service lines in 2018. That means that if you can't, just according to this, if you can't do the 6,000 in the, the year 2018, then in my opinion, the contract should be reassessed to divide that 6,000 and whatever cost you associated with that and whatever the each one times 1,700 
should, in my opinion, be a fair assessment of what you guys have managed. But thank you, Mr. President. Point, I'm all done. Point of information. What's your point? I want to, to make sure, I guess my question is, does council understand and do these gentlemen understand that their contract <clears throat> and the concerned pastor settlement are two separate legal agreements? Okay. All right. Uh, Councilman Guerra. Why have you not hosted another community meeting? Uh, that's one thing that I was strongly disappointed from was in the very beginning you guys hosted a community meeting held at Mott uh, Community College and you said that you would come back with an update for residents. I want to know why you haven't hosted that. Um, we were um, asked not to until we got further along in the program. Who asked you not uh, to? I leave somebody in the administration, I'm not sure. Could I, could I have audience please? Now, you, you, know, you know how we do things, or at least try, anyway. Mr. Proceed. Yeah, that's definitely concerning to me, um, because I think a lot of the residents were looking forward to that meeting and it never came, especially with the fact that your contract is about to be expired. So, uh, another question, um, kind of to touch on the base with um, Hydrovax. Uh, I had met um, with Goyette earlier, um, and do you guys support the stopping of Hydrovex being used as a tool? I didn't hear I, I, Do we support the stop of it being used as a tool? Not in regards to the spot checking, because I do not agree with that method, because I think it misses some of the splices, but in regards to being used as a tool to dig up the 10 feet trenches. Hydrovac is a tool, but as I think I mentioned at the meeting last week when Hydrovac came up, if you take a look at the specifications, Hydrovac is not mentioned as an excavation tool in the contract. It calls for excavation and that would be by a backhoe or whatever. And when it comes to getting close to the lines, it calls for hand digging. And that is what we are dealing with. Because to my understanding, Mr. after President. hearing, especially through the testimony that we had, um, uh, Through the yeah. testimony that we had recently in the investigative hearing, I understood that hydrovacuuming using it as a tool would be a safer method because it's safer around those pipes, especially when doing that type of excavating. Would you say that was wrong information? Hydrovacuuming. And, 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 and to my knowledge, I did think it was in the contract for those uh, people who did apply to use it. Mr. President. Am I, am I wrong? I, I didn't hear all the question. My <laughs> Yeah, ACOM. Yeah, I, I thought it was. Is it not in your contract that you can use hydrovacuuming? Because remember, during testimony when we had during the investigative hearing, it was said that hydrovacuuming was used as a productive tool to do this because it was safer around the I'm not, pipes. And stuff I'm not like that. sure that that's our was our testimony that you may have heard that from, and I cannot specifically speculate about which is a more safe procedure if either one of them is done properly. All right. That's all I got to ask. Okay. Councilman Davis and then Councilman Griggs. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I just got a simple question for you two gentlemen. Um, Mr. President, I had my name in there. Yeah. I was before him. I, I asked to speak a long time ago. But but he has not spoken. Oh. And and they they're they're winding down their five minutes. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. President. Go ahead. My question is this. Y'all excavated how many uh service line holes right now? How many are you done? Through uh, through last Friday I think it was nine thousand six hundred and sixty three or something. Okay, over ninety six hundred. Actual excavated holes. My question to you as y'all being the professional that you are, 
any way you could be 100% certain without excavating a hole. In other words, without exploring a hole, can you be 100% certain that it's not copper to copper or copper to lead without actually digging in or would a predictive model give you the exact 100% guarantee of what's down there in that ground that's buried without digging a hole? No, that's not possible. Now, I know this can't be as simple as it sounds to me that my colleagues don't understand. If I really want to know, I have to lay my eyes on it to know if it's copper to copper or copper to lead. You have to dig a hole to find out. Wouldn't that be correct? Correct. Why would you not explore a hole even though I have a predictive model that might be stated 98% accurate, you're still going to have to be 100% certain dig a hole. I'm halfway understanding, well, I'm not understanding what my colleagues getting at saying, y'all dug holes, but you didn't replace, uh, the number was 6,000. If you dug 9,600 holes, that means now, we could guarantee 9,600 over 9,600 homes has been corrected. Yes or no? Correct. Yes. Am I right or wrong? You're right. Even though we only contracted 6,000 or whatever that number was, you, you far exceeded what you promised in your contract. That's what I'm hearing. Unless, please correct me. No, that, that is correct. You would have to dig that hole to be 100% certain. Correct. I have no further questions unless I'm missing the point. I'm done. We have Councilman Griggs and then Councilwoman Winfrey Carter. Now, let me just say this. Uh, I've been counting your five minutes to be fair to Nayira. You have two minutes. You, you've gone with two minutes and 33 seconds. Okay, just talking. Um, Councilman Griggs. Okay. I have dealt with contractors 25 years, just like ACOM and some bigger. Some, uh, but in defense of ACOM, they're doing what they've been told. They've been told to go digging hoes. Don't care what's in the hole, just dig hoes. They've also been told not to use hydroback. They've also been told not to use the predictive model. It's not their fault. They don't want to say who told them not to do these three items, which is a shame because I think that's who we need to be fussing with, is whoever told them not to do these three items, not them. It's not their problem. They're doing what they were told. I've dealt with contractors before, Fleur, Bechtel, Fulman Kellogg, Brown and Root. You know them. It's not, they're doing exactly what the boss says. They just don't want to say who. I'm done. Councilwoman Winfrey Carter. Okay. Um, I'm looking at task order two, and it says that you guys are to plan and manage the removal of at least 6,000 lead service lines in 2018, right? That's what it says. Now, I don't know, maybe I'm missing a point. Could plan and manage means that you're gonna um, do the exploration, right? And then if you find that it is not a copper line, then you will remove it and move to the next house, excavate, and then if it is a lead line or copper line, you make that determination. If it's lead, you remove it, right? Correct. That would be under plan and manage, right? Plan and manage the removal of at least 6,000 lead service lines in 2018. Maybe I'm missing a point. I don't know. I think you guys are doing a great job. You, you've, you've, 
you've um, done explorations of 9,953, right? And out of that, you found that you needed to replace 1,513 lines, right? Correct, something like that. Okay, I, I'm not getting it. I don't understand what the problem is here, but thank you. Thank you. Okay, Councilwoman Worthing. Thank you. We're back to you now. Thank you so much. Uh, so, to kind of go along with what Mr. Griggs said, um, he worked in the private sector. He didn't work in, uh, in, in the government. And in this case, we're the boss too. So the mayor is the one that said, don't use the predictive model. The mayor is the one who said, just dig up lines uh, in every ward. Uh, the mayor is the one who told you not to use the hydro the information. Back. What's your point? Would well, she know that to be correct, the statement she's making on record? If they didn't make the decision and we didn't make the decision, there's only one person left, and that's the mayor. Proceed. <laughs> Thank you. So, I mean, it's not a secret. Everyone sitting here knows the mayor is the one who told you to do this. However, Council also needs to sign off on it. So the fact that you just listened to the mayor and you didn't come to council and it didn't go through the legal way means that that was at your own risk because that was not in your contract. And uh, for Mr. Guerra, page 2-6 uh, is where it says four hydrovac exploration <coughs> crews, one field rep for every two exploration crews assumes 6,000 explorations can com be completed in six months by four contractor cr crews. It's, there's a lot of information, so I really had to dig. But also, I want to read uh, page 525 on the project approach. Um, it says, project five, lead service line replacements, phases four, five, and six. Flint estimates that 6,000 lead service lines must be identified and if found, replaced each year for the next three years to remove the risk of lead contaminating household water supplies. This activity is central to restoring trust in the public water supply and success depends on the ability to complete this project as quickly and efficiently as prop, uh, possible. This is AECOM's words and contract. Project planning activities and high level approach. As efficiencies are gained through improved replacement techniques and additional resources, recent estimates indicate that about 50 lead service lines are replaced a day. AECOM believes that the city can achieve the target of identifying and replacing 6,000 lead service lines, identifying and replacing 6,000 lead service lines in 2017 and repeat this again in 2018 and 2019. Meeting this goal is central to restoring trust and credibility for the public water supply. Those are your words. You've lost my trust and many of the trust around here. Um, also, you keep mentioning the concerned pastors. We didn't sign anything that you had to follow uh, exactly what was in the concerned pastors. Those are two different things. And concerned pastors... Point of information. What's your point? Do she realize the city council signed a consent agreement in the concerned pastor settlement? It's a consent agreement. She's wrong. Okay. I would like to say that they're wrong because the concerned pastors, they were in court not long ago because they're upset that you're not using the predictive model. I've personally talked point to... Point of information. What's your point? My point is, do she realize we did sign on? That's it. Okay. I've personally talked to those in, um, that are part of that settlement and they want you to use the predictive model. They knew before council knew that you weren't using it and were trying to force you to use it. Uh, there was one other thing. Oh, um, in the last meeting, you said 
and I've read this somewhere, that you didn't want to use the predictive model because it was only 94% uh, effective, yet, uh, and you wanted it to be 100% effective, and that's why you didn't use it. Yet, didn't you just tell Mr. Guerra that there wasn't 100% certainty? Point of information. What's your point? Do she realize when she wasn't here, Mr. Wong say they did factor it in? The predictive model. Yeah, the predictive. She wasn't here. Okay. Proceed. I was here. I don't know what he's talking she about. Okay. Just proceed no, with your question. In any case, the predictive model was 94% accurate. You didn't use it. Um, and you you didn't fulfill your contract. Uh, council and the city, and I am surprised that our city attorney uh, would let this happen and not advise council to pursue a suit. Point of information. What's your point, council? If you gonna let her talk without asking questions, you check me even though I had asked questions. So nope, now I'm what's happening over there is we getting different treatment? Nope, she just, you're, you're, I want I'm you to, you, got you, got, you have 15 more seconds. Check I'm, I'm almost done. You got 15 <laughs> seconds. I'm going to wait for him to stop. Okay. Um, I'm surprised that the city is not asking council to pursue a suit for breach of contract, um, or at least that we should go through the uh, dispute resolution process. Okay. I'm Councilwoman Galloway. Sir. Okay. I just wanted to, to restate what this says. And, and so if I'm misunderstanding something, Attorney Linda Poli, it says plan and manage the removal of at least 6,000. The word at least denotes that this is the minimum that you will be responsible for planning, managing the removal of. When you see the word at least, that means anything under that number that follows at least means that you did not meet the minimum requirements as stated in a contract. And so I'm, I'm not trying to play um, word games, but the number behind the at least is most important. And what has been shared by these gentlemen, although I respect how much time you spent on the 9,000 excavation, I'm not saying that you guys haven't been doing anything, and so please don't misunderstand me. But based on what this reads and how it reads, it means that if there is less than 6,000 done, there is the possibility that maybe this line shouldn't have been, it should have been up to and including. I don't know, but just based on what that says. And so I just wanted to say for the record that I, I'm not saying that you guys aren't doing a lot of work. I'm just saying that based on what this says, and again, over in that section, um, task number two assumption, Point number five, bullet point four, it again reassesses that. And so with that, Councilman um, Winfrey, oh, okay. I appreciate you allowing me to share. Okay. Again, as much as I appreciate you guys changing and continuing on, it is my opinion as only one of nine council people that what I read in this contract has not been done. I don't know who told you guys what to do. And we haven't even gotten into, Councilman Winfrey, um, the deposition that was provided to us um, based on the concerned pastor's um, settlement and the documentation. And I could go on in reading these documents about the dates and times of the various people, including various people from AECOM, um, our communication um, press officer and multiple other people in this legal document that is transcribed by the clerk, the attorney, the clerk that, that does the whatever, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but numerous dates and times of being asked. Are you asking to them assist. a question? No, I'm, I'm just doing it for the record that there is documentation based on the concerned pastors that shares you. that this was a huge part and okay. that they are most- Point of order, Ms. President. What's your point? I said it wasn't no rule to make you ask questions. You discriminated against me and said I hadn't asked nothing, even though I had, but you letting Worthen her make statement, statement. Why did you even interrupt me? 
when you letting others do what you check me for. Well, That's my point. Councilman, you were wrong. I, no, 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 yes, no, no, sir. no. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, Councilman, because you had you had spoken and and you were making commentary after you had spoken. That's what they but they, not, not, they still haven't spoken right. as long as you spoke. I it was don't trying matter to how clear. long I spoke. If I ask questions and spoke and you check me, you ain't checking them in the same way. It's a different treatment, no, sir. No, Councilman. It's that they're not, she's that's not my over. Point of order. I don't allow discrimination in my side. Councilman, she's not Check over five. She's not, said, Councilman, she's not over five minutes. I wasn't either. Yes, you were. You were. It wasn't no five-minute rule. It still ain't. Well, it's no, my special well, order. Could, you that created that in then. your mind. You could, that's a good argument, but but you were over five minutes. Okay, that's so, what I was trying to do. so let me say this. This is their second round. It's their second round. So right. they're over five minutes. No, Councilman, I, what, what, what I Who, was What rules are we going by? You're well, telling you me. Won't, you, won't, you, don't, you don't want to know the answer. You're trying to smother it. I'm just I'm saying a point answer. of order. You didn't check them. You're well, being discriminated. here's what I did. You were at, you asked a question, you had five minutes, actually you had over five minutes, and I was saying that we were gonna go around a second time. And then that's what I was gonna, see, it doesn't matter what I say, it's not gonna be good enough for you. And it don't matter that I say it wasn't no five minute rule, it ain't gonna be good enough for you. I made okay. a special order to Thank get you. around the five minute Finish. rule what the record will show. Thank you, that sir. Ain't good enough. Mr. Mr. President, um, is it appropriate for me to um, make a motion? No, because we still got uh, Councilwoman Fields who wants to speak again. I understand that, I but still I, so go. don't I have? But don't I don't I have the ability to make a motion that we move to do something with the resolution? It's, or uh, it's always proper for a motion to be made, but I'm just saying I want to give courtesy to I've, Eva's talk two times. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I wanted to go around and let everybody who wanted to speak have two times. And I don't have a problem with that. But Councilman Mays has continued to disrupt me on my five minutes. I haven't abused it. You've been Point married. of order. Uh, What's your point, Councilman? A point of order ain't a disruption to be talking about. It's legal. And a point of information. So if this point of order is out on my point of information, does she know a point of order and point of information is a privileged motion and it's, and it's law? So okay. they can describe it where they want, but my point of information, does she really know Mr. what Mr. President, is? I'm very aware that those are privileged motions, but he's wrong in his assessments of what's being done, and it's disruptive. And so in- So how, what, what can we do to move on forward then? Because what you're saying, I, would, I hear what you're saying, but I'm saying we're not moving. It's like we're stuck. Right, but if I move now? the motion for the resolutions to move, we do move past this. And so that, that's- But you don't give everybody their time to talk. Mr. And I, in my last minutes, do you realize that even if this mo if I make a motion to move the resolution, they still have the opportunity to speak another Absolutely. five minutes again. Absolutely. And so they would have any time that they would need to discuss. I get so it. now let I me ask it. you a question. Ask, let me ask you a question. When you asked me, could you make a motion? What did I say to you? First you said no, and then you said a motion is. No. You said because you had a I list say, of people. No, 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 no. Yes, he did. I said it was proper to make a motion at any time, and then I explained what I was trying to do. So what do you want to do? Okay. <laughs> okay. Any other, any other council person? Councilwoman, Councilman, you've had two. This is, uh, I, I'd like to hear from somebody who, who's only, who hasn't had but one. Again, is there any other council person who'd like to, yeah, Councilman Mays? Yeah, Mr. President. Well, we have not had two. Proceed. I think the problem is we didn't intend to put a five minute rule on a special order. That's what I said when I made the motion. I said I want a special order because I don't want the five minute rule to interfere with talking to A.E. Com and Alec Gibb and Nair and them. And somebody just <coughs> messed up the intent. Now, Ms. Galloway want to mess up the intent and put a motion on the floor and lock us in the five minutes. That wasn't my intent for the special order. I chaired a finance committee the other day, and I just let them go back and forth with Mr. Moss, back and forth. And so that's what I'm getting at. You got some folks that just want to exclude Councilman Mays in the first ward. 
it ain't gonna happen. Mr. Branch, I seen when Ms. Worthing was talking about something the mayor said that you wanted to respond to that because I believe that if I got an opportunity and they talk about what the mayor said and Mr. Davis did a point of information, I'd like for Mr. Branch to be able to respond to that. Uh, yes, I would like to respond. To go ahead, Mr. Branch. I said, go ahead, proceed. I would like to respond to the acquisition, acquisition that the mayor directed AECOM to not use the predictive model. That is a, not a true statement. The mayor has never directed AECOM not to use the predictive model. The mayor does not get involved with the selection of addresses that are being excavated and explored. And so, and understanding that you have to be careful when you listen, I'm talking to the public and others, when you hear council people give wrong information on whatever subject matter, that's poison. So I would say this, thank you, Mr. Branch. I would say this, the predictive model if this council wanted to vote on a contract that said we demand you use the predictive model, council could have did that last year when they approved these contracts. But council didn't know about the predictive model. Now they know about it. The right thing to do for the citizens of Flint is incorporated in phase six. If you don't want to vote for a contract that excludes the predictive model, vote it in with contractors and in phase six. If you want hydro back and done, vote it in in phase six and put it in the contract. That's where we at. Y'all looking back at something you didn't even do. It ain't that AECOM might not have used it. You didn't even know about it when you voted for AECOM to have a $5 million contract. And not everybody want to point the finger at somebody else because they didn't know about a predictive model then, didn't know about hydro vacuum per se then. Yes, in there. And if half of the city says stop hydro vacuum, I brought Martha Brown in. I brought Mr. Gilchrist in, and Eva said, who was he? He wasn't nobody. He shouldn't, what has he got to do with it? That's the shot, one of the shot callers. That's what he got to do with it. And then Miss um, Winfrey Carter got like me, a little Eric Mays in her, and told Miss Worthing to cut it out in so many words. I was proud of Miss Winfrey Carter got a little Eric Mays in her. Because when we bring the right people up here to get the questions answered, where people ain't got to just throw wrong information out about the mayor, me, or nobody else, they saying what we got them up here for. And then um, when you try to hold an investigative hearing and you had seven, eight, nine people, Miranda, from AECOM, Kate Fields and Eva Worthy, neither one of them was here. They wasn't here. And they had just had a press conference the day or so before talking about they didn't ask questions. Just lying. Just lying in a press conference. Just lying. So you got some liars up here, because they got the right to ask questions if they hear. And then you give them an opportunity, and now they want to vote to limit the discussion. But they want me to chair a meeting and let them go all day, all day, back and forth, which I did. Then I get out the chair, and you got all these goofy minute rules when they done had plenty of time and ain't bust the grape. That's what we used to say when you ain't really found nothing hard line. Ain't bust a grape. Let me show you what I mean by that. This is the day. This is the change order. It's in writing. It conforms with the contract. Let me say this. This is the day. You got a management company in here that's acting like a department. It ain't General McDaniels. General McDaniels and Nick wasn't acting like a department. They didn't do the project plan, which was tedious and timely. We had to do it. I might have paid a million for it if it gets me a hundred million. So they, they, General McDaniels ain't no comparison. He didn't do the project plan. General McDaniels ain't no comparison because he wasn't dealing with invoice and checking them and doing what they did per se. General McDaniels ain't no comparison because he didn't subcontract his $125,000 out to ARCO. ARCO running with 30 inspectors, 
y'all got to go out in the field. And these inspectors making $20 an hour, so all this comparison to General McDaniels ain't exactly the same. Now, if y'all want to know whether they profited a million dollars, a million and a half, or two million, ask them. And then if they don't want to tell you, they can tell you. But y'all ain't asking the right questions. Y'all just talking about, ah, uh, we wish they had to use the predictability model so we could see if we could have found 70% versus 20%. So since they didn't use the predictability model, we don't want to pay them for their work. I'm a union man. I'm going to try to pay them for their work. And hey, what, Joe Pops. I'm going to try to get you paid for your work. I'm a union man. 700000 for you ain't no different than the $1.1 million. Somebody did a verbal communication and said, keep working. I'd have did the same thing. Uh, uh, I'd have said, keep working. I'm not going to shut you down in September. This is the day. Five things. You're right, Mr. Griggs. It ain't AECOM. We know who was calling the shots. We know who was causing this, calling the shots, and we know who said don't use hydrovax. We know as it relates to the predictability model when Kate Fields learned about it and when even them did. They learned about all of this, in my opinion, from Zara. The Flint Journal, <laughs> the Flint Journal wrote an article. And after Zara wrote that Flint Journal article, I looked in Finance Committee and it was attached to my agenda and something put on there that I didn't know about. I hit the ceiling because they said the chairman had a lot of say on what's on the agenda. I know when it all started and I didn't looked at the attachments on where they getting their information from. The media don't run my boats. Councilman, you got one more minute. One more minute. Yes, now, sir. he out and created a special order, but remember, we got a third round, maybe, Pastor Gilbert, and I didn't even know who made these rules because I asked for the special order. So in my last 30 seconds that they allege that I have, ain't been no rule about you got to ask questions. You can't make statements. But remember, I got checked. Like I hadn't asked no questions and had asked multiple questions. This process is turning into a farce. I'm going to see how many people vote. If they vote no, it complicates this matter. If they vote no, why don't y'all pack up and leave tomorrow and leave them out there? I'm hoping y'all got five votes. I can count four. I'm looking for one more. It's going to be Gara or Griggs. That's what I think. And so let's see what people do. Is they saying... Thank you, Councilman. Any other discussion? Any other discussion? Yeah, Mr. President. But <laughs> any other discussion from Ms. folks President. that... Mr. President. Let, let me just... Let me, let, me, let me finish what I was going to say. Any other people, uh, any other colleagues who have not spoken twice that would like to say something? Okay. Yeah, Mr. President, what am I, chopped liver? You, you've spoken twice. Twice. You amazing. said if you spoke twice and you want to say something, that's three. No, so I, I said, said, Mr. President. Any other, I said, it is, is it any other, my, any other of my colleagues that haven't spoken twice? Councilman? Mr. Guerra's got his hand up. Councilman Guerra. Yeah, I want to make a motion to vote to approve or I want to make a motion to vote to approve or disapprove um, resolution 180583. Mr. President. Councilman, Councilwoman Worthy. I second that. There is a motion on the floor to this resolution. approve 180583. Mr. President. Wait just a second. What, what are you trying to say? Make your motion. Withdraw your second. Point of order. He What's said motion to approve. He said approve or disapprove. Make a motion. Make the make He the proper made motion. the motion to approve. There's that a motion to approve one eight zero. Uh, Mr. President. Councilwoman. I Council. second the motion. And to it's approve. been moved and seconded. Is there any Mr. discussion? Mr. President. Five eight three, I'm sorry. 
<laughs> Mr. President, I have a discussion. <laughs> yes. Uh, for Mr. Branch, um, I do have a question because I did see the mayor uh, speaking negatively and discounting the predictive model. Um, so it's a surprise to me, um, but maybe AECOM made that decision not to use it. But did, who made the decision to stop hydrovacking then? Was it the mayor point or Point of AECOM? information. What's your point, Councilor? Do she hear me keep saying Mr. Wong testified under oath that they factored it in? She keeps saying they didn't use it. They didn't use it. No. Point of information. Oh. She wasn't here. You have not been recognized, Councilman. You, you haven't been recognized. Councilwoman Fields, go ahead. Go ahead. Proceed, Councilman, uh, Councilman Mays. Wait a minute. I'm done. Um, I asked Mr. Branch oh, okay. who made the decision uh, to stop hydrovacking. The decision to stop hydrovacking was made by the administration. It was made because hydrovacking was miss, missing lines that were spliced, and the decision was made that we, we did not want to miss any spliced lines, so we suspended and put a moratorium on hydrovac, and that was done by the administration. Uh, what about um, once the administration knew, uh, and I believe the concerned pastors went in July, the concerned pastor settlement stated that the excavation could be done as a method chosen by the city. That's what's in the concerned pastor settlement. It verbatim. also says best practices. It does not say best practices it, in the concerned I've read it. Practices. It does. I don't have it with me, unfortunately, so I can't but prove it. But it says in the settlement that the decision on the excavation method would be made by the city. And... Uh, were you aware that council signed a contract that included hydrovacking and when the mayor I made that decision? That, I, I was aware that council signed an agreement to do hydrovacking, but hydrovacking is inadequate for what we needed to do for the citizens of the city of Flint. The decision was made by the administration to stop hydrovacking because it did not show all of the service line materials. And we have evidence that they're missing service lines that are spliced. So I just do want to point out that council did not approve that. It was solely the mayor's decision, and the state and the NRDC and even the concerned pastors <laughs> you keep talking about have asked the city to resume using the predictive model and hydrovacking. I, I guess I don't understand. Council never approved this, and neither does any other entity that we should stop using hydrovacking. The decision was made by administration to suspend hydrovacking because it did not allow us to find all the service line materials that were compromised. Thank you. Councilwoman Fields. Alan Wong testified as part of a, a brief filed in the concerned pastor's lawsuit that it was city policy city policy about this hydrovacking and to not use the predictive model. Now, city policy is supposed to be something that council actually is brought to council and we approve formally. City policy is not made informally. And these gentlemen that are here from AECOM, you know, whether Alan Wong said this or they said that, frankly, every time we get a new face here representing AECOM, we hear a different story, we hear different facts. You know, Mr. Weingarten, I'd never seen before, maybe he's been here before. Mr. Tharp just showed up. And then the people who said stuff initially that all this, you know, people are making decisions on, all of a sudden they're all gone, not only the first in command, but the second, which to me is, is pretty strange and coincidental. And, you know, I can't get it straight because AECOM gives us a different answer every time. And Mr. Branch just gave his opinion of what the concerned pastor settlement said. And once again, <laughs> that's his opinion. And the concerned point of pastors information. What's your point? don't necessarily hold the there's, same. There's, there's a privilege motion on the floor. What's your point? 
I think when you can read and see that the city had in the agreement the opportunity to deal with excavation, wouldn't Ms. Fields think that's more than an opinion when it's in writing? Proceed, Ms. Fields. Kate. Mr. Guerra? No, I, uh, I beg your pardon. You know, by my last response here is, wouldn't AECOM understand that they had to remove 6,000 lead lines when it's in writing? That's my response. Mr. Guerra. Uh, yeah. So what I'd like to do is... Hey, Ecom, I understand that your contract is up if this change order would go through before, on December 31st. Is that correct? With this, with this change order, it would extend us to December 31st of 2018, yes. Okay. So I would like to see a substitute motion. I want to make a substitute motion for no additional cost to the city of Flint that Ecom host a community meeting for the residents before their contract is up. But that's that. So are you saying no to this? Well, because point of order, Ms. President. What's your point? That don't even conform with the motion that's on the floor. Right, right, right. I would attach it to the. You can't. You can't. Motion because to the original contract, they had public public outreach and community stuff, and you hosted a meeting. The reason I say that is because you hosted a meeting beforehand, and then you never had another one for residents. Point of point of order. I, what's your point? Now, the motion he made just don't conform with the motion. Now, if he said move to approve it um, contingent upon a meeting, that might conform. But what he's saying, my point of order, that don't even conform with the motion to switch off of our approval to go to a community meeting dry like that. I say it's out of order. I think you're right. Yeah, OK, all right. Mr. President. Councilwoman Galloway. So, so have we separated the AECOM resolution, and that's what we're? I'm trying to. We just, we just asked. The, it was just, it was a motion on the floor to to approve 180583. That was, I was finishing, because normally we have a master resolution. Right. So you guys separated this, and then we'll oh, go yeah. back to the master resolution. I guess that's what we're going to do. That's what the body wants to do. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Well. Yes. The answer is yes. Are we only voting on this one resolution? One resolution. Any other discussion on the motion? Yeah, Mr. President. Councilman Mace. Now, I'm glad to hear Mr. Guerra. I'm glad to hear Mr. Guerra make the motion to approve this, but that don't mean he will vote yes. I'm glad to hear it, but that don't mean he's going to vote yes. Somebody got his ear. <laughs> he, I know he don't know what I said. That's why I said, what is that? Somebody got his ear. I hope they ain't got it on this vote, but they got his ear. My position is this. You, you are right by asking when do the contract go to? December 31st. These are the relevant questions. The change order is from September to December. As far as the use of predictive model, if we want to correct that in phase six, AECOM say they can. And that's when you deal with the contract language. If you choose it, I might not go with it then. But that'll be the time to talk about it. Um, also, if you want hydro vacuum back in there, that would be the time to put it in there in phase six. But you got a lot of moving parts here. You got the concerned pastor's agreement, which is a moving part. Ms. Fields must don't really know that agreement if she think that by the city having a um, language in there that they can choose the method of excavation. That wasn't Mr. Branch's opinion. That's in writing, Pastor Gill, but that's in the concerned pastor's agreement. That ain't nobody's opinion. And so they are, according to the concerned pastor's agreement, they could say no hydro vacuum. But when you look at Martha Brown's agreement, that's a problem. When you look at Goyette's and the contractor's agreement, it's a problem. So you got problems and decisions made, but guess what I'm going to do, Pastor Gilbert? I'm a team player. 
If I was the administration and I was causing sh calling shots on a day-to-day -day basis, I ain't going to shut them down. Now, don't let Quincy distract you when I'm talking. He in your ear like Kate Fields in <laughs> Guerrero's ear. See, when you're talking sense, folks want to get in each other's ear because they ain't made enough argument. You got moving parts, Mr. Alec Gibb. Mr. Alec Gibb, do you know I fought for you to be able to walk in here and speak and they voted me down? So if you walk back in, you to be on deck if the liberal Mays motion passed, but the conservative feels and worthy motion passed. And they, you locked out, you ain't got a voice. Naira didn't have all her voice. So I don't know what's gonna happen, but I know this, y'all deserve to stay on board. And I don't wanna see y'all run out of here with this <coughs> nonsense on a change order that's coming before us today. Let's see what they're talking about over there. See? They don't be studying you when you're making arguments. I listen to them, but they show got a hard problem when you're giving them some sound logic. Let me say this about sound logic. And I don't know how... Mr. Winfrey, you told us on this side of the aisle to kind of be cool. And I can hear them all over here. And so think, all I'm trying to them. do, you I ain't got to respond to it. I'm just told you what happened on this side of the aisle. I'm actually trying to get these folks some information, and they over there jockeying to vote no. I don't know how they're going to vote, but I'm going to make a prediction, Mr. Thorpe. I predict May's going to vote yes, and they right here. I predict Mr. Davis going to vote yes. And I predict Ms. Winfrey Carter gonna probably vote yes. Um, other than that, I don't know. I don't know what Mr. Um, Guerrero gonna do and Mr. Um, Griggs, because what I do when I speak on a motion, I'm gonna say I'm gonna vote for it against it. They ain't saying nothing. So I don't know, but I know we got three. We need two more. And y'all need to stay here and continue to work with this city in this crisis. I sit in on court today listening to land. I listen to land, the engineers, and they throwing everybody under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> I sit in Manly's court today. So let me wrap up by saying this. We in a crisis. I'm not finna throw AECOM under the bus. Y'all done did a good job. Y'all need to stay on board. And I'm telling you, at least to December 31st. And you deserve to get paid for your work just as parts. You think you deserve to get paid? Uh, you do. And so watch this crowd. Now, they want you to get paid on the change order, but they want to stop this change order. Just hypocrite. Point of order. Yes. Does Councilman May still have time? No, he just his, his five minutes was over with. I'm, I'm letting him wrap up. Go ahead, Councilman. So I get to wrap up. Miss Galloway must have been timing me, so I'm going to wrap up by repeating the same thing I just said. They believe your change order should get paid, Mr. Pox, but they don't like this change order. That's a little hypocritical. I'm consistent on both change orders because I understand the business. The folks you hear up here, some of them don't understand the business. They just got your moment. I got you. And we're trying to move a city and manage a fast start program. Mr. Gibb, I enjoyed your communication, and we're going to try to fix some stuff in phase six. Thank you, and Councilman. Your, your five minutes is far gone, sir. Oh, I was going to ask for special privilege for Gibb. No. I ain't got no more time, Gibb. <laughs> <laughs> any other any other discussion on the motion of passing one eight zero five eight three? Yeah, what they do? No other discussion. Madam Clerk, roll call. Mr. Guerra. Yes. Ms. Fields. No. Uh, Ms. Winfrey Carter. Yes. Mr. Winfrey. Yes. Ms. Galloway. No. Mr. Griggs. No. Ms. Worthing. No. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. The 
vote is uh, five yes, four no. Ms. Brown, that mean, uh, are there any communications? Not at this time. Sir. Appointments? This brings us to the master resolution excluding 180583. What is the council's pleasure? Mr. President. Councilman Mays. Um, is we on, um, let me see, you said. Master resolution. You entertain an emotion for 180. Nope. No, I'm, I'm, uh, I said I'm, I'm the master uh, resolution excluding the one we just we, the okay. I would move the re master resolution for approval. <laughs> There's a motion on the floor to move the master resolution, Councilman Guerra. I'll second that motion. There's a motion on the floor to move it. It's been properly seconded in the discussion, Mr. President. Councilman Mays. Uh, Mr. President. I said Councilman. Okay, Mays. Mr. President. I can remember the media and these council people saying, when Councilman Mays lose a vote, he get mad and leave. Look at them. They leaving, and we still got business to do. They leaving, they gone. But now, on this motion, I'm going to separate something. Okay. I want to separate um, 180589. Okay. And, um, I think that's the only separation, but I'm here to tell you, you got to watch these hypocrites because they showed and talked about me publicly when I lose a vote in motion, and I don't usually leave meetings, but they repeatedly, Kate Fields and Eva, get up and leave. They need to be gone if that's how they want to play the game. So it ain't Mays who get frustrated and leave when they lose a motion. It's them, and it's been repeated. Mr. Guerra, I hope you don't get put on punishment. Thank you, Mr. Uh, President. Okay, there's one separation. Is there any other discussion on the motion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Briggs? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Guerra? Yes. The vote is seven yes, zero no on the master resolution. Okay. And then there's a separation on 180589. Councilman Mays? Yeah, Mr. President, I separated that. In the next couple of weeks, we'll be bringing the resolution, um, Mr. Millhouse, Attorney Millhouse. Attorney Millhouse, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, in the next meeting or two, we'll bring the resolution to transfer those other four, or five, or nine properties. Um, and I want this council to know that. So, Mr. President, the only reason I separated that, because I got to amend one more, which is 906 East Dewey. That's in the third ward. I've had conversation with Mr. Gear about that. That's tall riches. And so um, I want to um, move to a, do a point two. I want to do a, what's that resolution number? 180. 589. 589. I would ask that we amend 180589.1 to a 180589.2 to include an additional address of 906 East Dewey. Okay, there's a motion on the floor to change that, to amend, rather, 580589.1 to a 580589.2. Is there support for that motion? Mr. President, I second. Has it been moved and properly seconded into discussion on the motion? Yeah, Mr. President, before we vote, could I ask you or the secretary, how many properties is that now, Davina, or Mr. President, the record is I think it's eight. Is that eight? I think it's eight. How many, Ms. Brown? Is it six? I have eight. Off the news. Is it six? 
Leslie Drive? Yes, he did. So, yeah, Leslie Drive was on that. Leslie Court. Leslie right. Court. I think it's eight. It's eight. Yeah. Would you like me to go through the addresses? Mr. Councilman, Mayor? Councilman, the city clerk's going to not, going to, going to, uh, to take your part. That she has. She's going to announce the, the addresses that she has. The addresses are as follows, 1113 West Hamilton. Occupy. Uh, 1814 West Hobson. West what? Hobson. Occupy. 1905 McPhail. Occupy. Um, Occupy. 1827 Shalon. Vacant. 3638 Gloucester. Vacant. 542 East Dewey. Occupied. And then an address on Leslie Court. Occupied. So all of those. Do you have that number on Leslie Court? Yeah, on Leslie Court. Um, let me find it. The Leslie Court address was 5621. Leslie Court occupied. Those are all owner occupied, pretty much. Those um, are the point ones. Now with the point two. It would be 906 East. Uh, 906 East, East Dewey. 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 And so that, that's the point, too. That makes the eight. Any other discussion yeah, on the motion? Yes, you said 906 East Dewey. Right, mm -hmm. not 946. And so that, and then to Mr. Griggs question, those were occupied, the occupied ones. And I'm... Um, we should be bringing a resolution to the next council meeting to get rid of, it'll be a total now of, well, how many was this? Eight. Eight With the and Dewey. seven, 15, nine or more will disappear if the council <laughs> vote to give them to the occupied owners and I'm gonna be asking that they do. All right. Any other discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Guerra? No. Pardon? Okay, the vote is uh, five yes, one no. Mr. President? Councilman May? Yeah, I would move um, that resolution which is one eight zero I mean one eight zero five eight nine point two for approval. There's a motion on the floor to approve one eight zero five eight nine point two. Is there a support for that motion? Councilman Davis? Second. It's been moved and second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Yeah, Mr. President. Mm -hmm. Can we ask Ms. Brown or somebody to, according to the memo that we got, when we vote and pass this tonight, if it passes, can we ask our staff to contact the land bank person that's named in the memo? In addition to the pass of the resolution, they wanted us to contact them prior to a certain date in the memo to make sure that we notify them by email a particular lady that we have rejected all them other ones and kept them. So I would ask that if our staff or whoever want to find out, I can show you where we need to contact somebody. Um, You're going to provide them with the contact name? Yeah. That's on okay. the document here. Right. Mr. Mays, I read that as well because the original document comes to the clerk anyway and I send it to the administration. And even though we can make the contact tomorrow to let them know, there still has to be something official from City Hall. To That's correct. Them before the 31st of December. And we need to do that right away. So we'll work on that tomorrow. Uh, Mr. Branch, Mr. Newsom, you hear what we're talking about making that contact to make sure we don't have all that property we don't want. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay. Any other discussion on the motion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Guerra? No. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. The vote is five yes, one no. 
That brings us to liquor license, Madam Clerk. We do not have any. Introduction and first reading of ordinances. None at this time. Second reading and adoption of ordinances. None. This brings us to, we included additional council comments. Then that brings us to final council comments. Mr. Griggs. What? You got comments? <laughs> huh? We're at final council comments. <laughs> I had no comments. Then Ms. Winfrey Carter. Thank you, Mr. President. I just want to say that I am glad that the um, AECOM contract is going to continue. I think it's important that we continue to work. Uh, you know, we bring in good companies to do the work in this city, and I think we need to respect, respect them and, and, you know, embrace what they're trying to do for our city. So I'm, I'm glad that that um, contract was approved, and um, I look forward to um, working with AECOM in the future. And thank you all for um, attending, and um, thank you um, to my colleagues. I think we got a lot of work done today. It was, it was long, I mean, you know, but I think we did um, came here and we've done what we were supposed to do as a council. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Guerra. I think that the city, I think that the city of Flint in general is going forward in the right direction um, I, under the council leadership and overall. Um, I think that we have what, about over 18,000 pipes in place so far in the city of Flint and the, the mayor announced that we're a full year ahead of schedule. So I think as long as we keep heading in the right direction, it's not always going to be a straight road. There may be some bumps along the way, but as long as we continue to work together and do what's right for the city of Flint, I think we'll prosper and go far. Councilman Davis. Councilman Mays. Yeah, I asked Mr. Davis to yield to me because I wanted to say thank you publicly to Councilman Griggs. Councilman Griggs, as you leave, I appreciate your independence, and so if I'm judging you wrong, I apologize. I would say to Mr. Guerra, I appreciate or don't sometimes appreciate your independence, but you had two different votes did today, so I can appreciate your independence and it balances out. But that's just like President Winfrey. Oh, I know Mr. Winfrey, and I know y'all, I'm getting to know you and Griggs and others. Hey, I'm gonna say what I wanna say. I don't care if he's the president, if I can respectfully disagree with him making up them rules, he made them rules up. He made them rules up. We hadn't said nothing about five minutes, Attorney Millhouse, where he got by. We didn't appeal him, but I'm sure get pissed off when I'm fighting to try to give facts and information and I'm hearing wrong information throughout there. 150,000 on them houses. An opinion about something that's in writing. So Mr. Guerra, one vote I didn't agree with one I did agree with, and um, that happens. But I think, for the most part, we did what was right here today. Mr. Davis, I appreciate you yielding in order for me to be able to catch Mr. Griggs before he left, and I appreciate them seconds in the Special Affairs Committee meeting. Sometime it go long, but in principle, I think we need to be consistent. So um, I appreciate you so much, Mr. Davis. I appreciate you, Ms. Winfrey Carter. Mr. President, I voted for you. This is the first time I voted for somebody for president other than myself. So I appreciate you, but I just don't always agree with you. I think you harder on me than you is on the white folks. I said that on purpose. You can say white. Um, you ain't that hard on the Hispanic, but I think because you black, you hard on me because you think I'm cool with you and can understand it, and you patty cake with. That's Merry Christmas. Good night, everyone. I would, unless you got something, I move. Yeah, just, just before we get out of here, I want to say thank you to all of my colleagues. Thank you to the uh, 
participants or the audience or the constituents who came out tonight. And one of the things briefly I want to say is I try not to take sides here. I try to be fair with everybody. So I'm a little bit disappointed with some folks tonight, but we'll get back on track. Thank I you. I'd like to entertain adjourn. a motion. I move There's to a motion adjourn. on the floor to adjourn. Is there any support? All in favor? Aye. We are adjourned. I believe cake. Man.